Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mark Andrzejczyk uh, of the Ukrainian Studies Program here at the Harriman Institute, Columbia University. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, we have a very exciting event, a lot of participants. Uh, and this is our last event for the semester, uh, but stay tuned. We already have some interesting events lined up for next semester and just check the Harriman Institute website for updates on that. Uh, I'm thrilled today to be doing another presentation uh, of a book uh, published by Academic Studies Press, uh, who's really stepped up and become a leader uh, in publishing books in Ukraine studies uh, in the last several years. Um, a lot of credit goes to my colleague Vitaly Chanetsky, who is the Ukraine C series editor there. Um, and today we're presenting the, uh, the book, Quiet Spiders of the Hidden Soul, uh, Mikola Mikbajan's early experimental uh, poetry. I just got my copy the other day. Um, and the title of our event is Translating the Hidden Soul, the Discovery and Collaborative Treatment of the Early Works of Mikola Bajan. Uh, so we have several panelists presenting in different blocks today, um, which will include the discussion of the book and uh, reading of some of the poems in the book. Um, I'll introduce each block as we get to it. And after the presentation, we'll have a chance for a q and I'll be fielding the questions and posing them to our participants. We'll try to get to all the questions as much as we can, all time permitting. Um, and the event will be recorded and it will be up on the Herman YouTube um, site later. Uh, but before we start, I just want to uh, say, um, as someone who's been teaching uh, 1920s uh, Ukrainian literature uh, for over 10 years now, I'm, I'm super, super happy that this book came out. Um, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, and I want to thank everyone involved in, in making this book happen. Um, there's always been a, a lack of texts, uh, lack of translations of Bojan's poetry in English to be able to teach a course to, to students who don't read in Ukrainian or don't read well enough in Ukrainian. Um, and the supporting texts in the book uh, also in English are very helpful. So, and I'm sure my colleagues who also teach um, this period in Ukraine literature and this period in general in, in studies, uh, literary studies are, are very grateful as well. Um, I'm also happy that Shevchenko Scientific Society and the Ukraine Book Institute both supported this publication. It's a collaboration. Uh, we're talking about collaboration today, one that I hope will, will, will move on into the future with these two institutes, these important institutes supporting uh, such publications. Finally, I just want to thank Book Culture for also being part of today's event. Um, our first speaker, um, and I should mention that one of the speakers, Oksana Rosenblum, won't be able to join us today, and uh, we're sad to hear that, uh, but we'll uh, try to get by. And she was supposed to bring together with Lev Fried, and they're two of the three uh, editors of the volume, together with Angelika Kishna, but uh, Lev will speak, but I will mention Oksana uh, because she is very important in this book. She's an art historian and translator residing in New York City. Her projects have included visual research for the newly created museums of Jewish history in Warsaw and Moscow. Uh, Oksana's poetry translations from Ukrainian and book reviews appeared in Kalina Review, National Translation Month, and Versopolis. And Lev Friedman, another one of the editors, is a speech language pathologist based in New York City. He has facilitated translation projects and publications and has his own writings and translations have appeared in Ugly Duckling Press, Odessa Review, and the Cafe Review. So now I'll pass it along to Lev, who will introduce the volume. Lev, please. Hi, everyone. So just enormously thankful to uh, such a huge number of people and uh, institutions. Some mentioned, some too many to mention, um, especially in such a tumultuous moment to go back in time for something so long overdue, almost a hundred years since some of this work by a terrific young man who became a lot. And 50 years this year after he was offered to be considered for the Nobel and uh, subsequently had to decline. But we are here to honor his work and uh, in, past, in past attempts um, culminating to now. So thank you to the Harriman Institute of Columbia University for hosting us. It's actually fitting that we find ourselves at Columbia. Um, we found ourselves there often taking pit stops to conspire and recharge and uh, we were supported by the institution and some wonderful people. 
including Mark. Thank you so much for your support and nurturing. So I want to tell you how we got here. This is ultimately a case of momentum deferred, something like thunder inevitably arriving after the lightning that birthed it. The sounds you will hear today from our lovely collaborators and the texts you will see are the products of sparks of inspiration and exercise of experimentation and freedom that took place almost 100 years ago. I stand by the conceit that this book was inevitable because I literally could not avoid it. And I made sure that other people could not either. And that it is necessary, as already mentioned, for the academic community, for, for so many different reasons, it needs to be returned into the light. That it is now done, the book is now done because each participant and the community which supported them, the size of which I have difficulty comprehending, believe that Mikola Bajan deserved more recognition. That we as a global community, readers, writers, students of history, people, that we could do better than what had been done and especially not done up until now. So I was born in Moscow. I did not grow up with Ukrainian, nor was it ever taught to me. Branches of my family were Ukrainian Jews for a very long time. My generation, however, was robbed of the language and much else by the forces that we all know too well. The first time I really encountered Ukrainian was with my accidental discovery of a side of Mikola Bajan, which to my disdain was also a discovery for many who have spoken the language since childhood, something that should have been known, his poem reflecting on what he had witnessed firsthand at Babi Yar. The work was little known in Ukrainian, near virtually unknown in the West. I could not abide this and it took years, but in the end I was able to assemble a community and a team of translators that helped me to return this work to the light in the West and in Ukraine. This was one poem, many translators, many translators, two chosen and uh, published in the Odessa Review years ago. 2016. The book before you is dedicated to much earlier material produced by a much younger Bajan, but the effort that produced this book was rooted in the same thing, the potential, potentiality born of the discovery of beauty, both of writing and the human that produced it, termed kinetic by the drive to share it. A little over a year after I thought I had fulfilled my duty to Bajan's memory, I was approached by Oksana Rosenblum, who is unfortunately not here, um, and whose statement I will also be reading in a tiny bit. Uh, Oksana approached me with yet another poem, a very different poem called Brasmova Sirdets, Heart to Heart Conversation. This was again a Bajan and a Ukrainian, which is absolutely bewildering to me. And now I'm also among quite a few other people who do speak Ukrainian to whom it is also bewildering. I hope we can share some of that bewilderment with you. And Oksana said, I want more for this. I want more for him. He deserved more. So I complied. Our naive hope of finding texts which we hoped could be found and then getting them translated and the conviction that it had to be done because it was not done. And had it be done, we would not have to do it. That's what got us here. We were able to again mobilize the troops who probably thought that by then I was done with them reactivate the network of scholars, librarians, institutions, friends, a web which was not bound by time zones, borders, or languages. I want to mention very briefly, Yerian and Simbal at the Institute of Literature Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, our collaboration with Thaisa Sidarchuk and the Emilian Pritzak Memorial Library, the National University of Kiev Mohila Academy, the staff at the Vernadsky National Library, the Department of Periodicals, and an enormous thank you to the Mikola Bajan Department Museum in Kiev for their support. And to Olha Alexik at the Ukrainian collection of Harvard University. There were messages flying back and forth at all hours, a friend in Budapest asking another friend in Kharkiv to search for a text, an essay being written between Germany and the Czech Republic, questions posed to the cloud about obscure turns of phrase and puns and metaphors with fascinating discussions emerging all catalyzed by texts which has proved timeless. Our co-editor Angelica was our guiding light in the deep dives, picking through the signifiers, splitting and then gluing back the hairs, forging a language of language in the process with each of our writers and translators. Waves of confusion and resolution, entropy and chains of contact, life and global events continuing in the meantime, this work survived and thrived. Holding it in my hand again, in disbelief, 
it has been a long time coming, waiting patiently, aging gracefully. So let's take a moment today to admire and receive the young Nicola Bajan. And now, um, my co-conspirator, Oksana, could not be here today, so I'm going to read a statement that she prepared. Um, some of it will refer to me in the second person. Oksana, for me, this project started with a chance encounter. I came across Bajan's long poem, Heart to Heart Conversation, from 1928 from the collection Budibli, Edifices, by chance, without knowing too much about his early poetry. I was struck by the imaginative power of his work. It truly felt as if there were no boundaries to his imagination, and he could travel anywhere in the blink of an eye. I approached the translation as an experiment. A certain level of lightheartedness helped me in a way, because had I known what I was getting myself into and how much time and revisions it would have taken, I might never have embarked on this journey. In retrospect, I'm very happy I did. I'm grateful to have met and worked with Lev and Angelica, my endlessly creative, patient, and dedicated co-editors. Lev became the true energy blast behind this project, coming up with new ideas at every stage of it, reaching out to so many different people who lent their support. Thank you. Where I was cautious, at times optimistic, he was full of hope and ideas on how to adapt to changing circumstances. And circumstances were always changing because a massive project like that without a budget relies for the most part on the trust in people's understanding that this work is important and needs to be done. Angelica was our true magus of the Ukrainian language, plowing through the original poems and working with translators one-on-one, -on -one, clarifying the flood of questions and puzzles that arise during the translation process, that endless transplanting work from one culture to another, from one time to another. My role, Oksana's role, was to envision what this book will be, from the poetry that will go into it, to the people who would write the introduction and the afterword, to the cover page and the list of illustrations. Having never worked on such a large project involving so many people, I was at times left breathless with the sheer amount of emails to write and respond to, text to type and edit, and ideas to play with. Add to that the psychological pressure, sometimes sadly, the negativity of people who tell you that this work can never be done. There was that as well. However, when at any point I felt that my strength was running out, I reminded myself that all I was doing was a balancing act. And as parts of the project were going down, the other parts were on the rise. As a compiling editor of the book, I wanted to include the most representative examples of Bajan's early poetry, regardless of how we modern readers might feel about this poet's literary journey. His futurist poetry, without a doubt, will attract many readers. At the same time, I hope that so will the poems from the 1926 collection, The 17th Patrol, which are dedicated to the revolutionary years, or his long phantasmagoric masterpiece, Hoffman's Night, or his epic tour de force, The Blind Bars, written when he was only 27 years old. A lot of work for this project centered around gathering Bajan's early poems from the periodicals of the 1920s for the first time into a single volume Locating some of his early poetry collections took a while. For instance, it took us a good few months to get a hold of Rizblendetin, the sculpted shadow. In fact, more than it took a few months, it, we literally did not think we would find this thing that we knew was findable, but we'd almost given up hope of finding it with about 10 people looking. This meticulous work of gathering the sources shows how much still needs to be done in order not only to unearth the Ukrainian literature of the 1920s and, and 30s, but also to create the necessary critical apparatus and even more so how much still needs to be translated. This is just the beginning. I would like to express special thanks to Marco, who was an early supporter of this book and generously shared this time and experience to our translators and consultants who wore different hats during the project. Ostapkin, Svetlana Lavishkina, Amelia Glazer, Miroslav Shkandri, to Vitaly Shrinetsky and Kate Yangudanova at Academic Studies Press for the many hours dedicated to the publication of this book and to Misha Belietsky, who designed the cover and was so patient with the torrent of the ideas we brought down on him and many, many more. The moment of transition took a while to register, that moment when you have to remind yourself that you do not have to go back to the PDF file anymore because the book is here, the actual printed book sitting on your desk. That moment is something I would always remember. That was Oksana, and now I turn the microphone over to just a small sampling, but nonetheless large crowd that we have gathered here. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much, love. Um, I prepared uh, many questions today and you answered about 80% of them already <laughs> between you and Oksana's introduction, but that's okay. Uh, I'll have many others. Uh, so thank you very much for telling us, uh, you know, how this, how this began and how it came together. Uh, now we're gonna move on and Helena Babak will talk about Mikola Bojan's literary path. Uh, Helena Babak is a scholar and editor-in-chief of the Czech journal Navechut. She received her PhD in Slavic literatures from Charles University in Prague. Her research focuses on Ukrainian and Russian avant-garde literature and on Ukrainian interwar literary theory. So the floor is yours, Helena. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mark. And um, thank you, everybody who uh, joined uh, uh, join, uh, this book and our today's uh, presentation. Um, yeah, I'm very thankful um, to Lev and Oksana who invited me uh, to take part in this project, uh, actually who found me and uh, some of my <laughs> works uh, on, uh, on the internet and suggested just to uh, the collaboration. Um, and uh, uh, I'm very thankful to uh, Evgeny Ostashevsky who helped me a lot uh, working on the introduction. Um, and actually, I'm very thankful to, to everybody uh, who, who helped uh, this project to be. Uh, today, I prepared um, uh, like 10 minutes uh, note um, on the uh, poetics of uh, early uh, Nick Bajan. Um, yeah, so... Um, um, I, I probably I will I will start uh, with the note that this uh, book is a big event, uh, not only for the English speaking world, but for Ukrainian literature as well, as it gives uh, the opportunity to rethink and to talk uh, about uh, Bajan's poetry and uh, like the complexity of the whole Ukrainian culture of the 1920s and 1930s. Uh, so the early um, so-called experimental Bajan is the author of uh, three poetry collections and separate poems uh, written in the late 1920s and early 1930s. Uh, let me name them uh, such, uh, his, uh, such books as uh, the uh, 17th Patrol 1926, the Sculptured Shadow, 1927, the Edifices, 1929, and such masterpieces as uh, Hot to Hot Conversation, Hoffman's Night, Getting Uman, and his uh, unfinished poem, Blind Bards. Uh, uh, all this uh, shows his development as a poet uh, from avant-garde strategies to metaphysical and philosophical poetry. Um, and uh, uh, above uh, all it is the desire to create a difficult and uh, sophisticated language uh, that gives a new vision of the same. Uh, here I would like to quote his so-called uh, uh, poetry manifesto from 1927 that he formulated in the, uh, in the article Put on your glasses. Uh, where he says, uh, to propose these things, browse and touch them, means to be unlike the impressionists. To touch things that are material and objective means to differ from the expressionists. To not contemplate, not photograph them, means to differ from the naturalists, to be a revolutionary materialist. So here's his vision of the like early, uh, early, let me say, futuristic uh, um, uh, poetry. Uh, the same overt objectification uh, becomes the foundation of the modern aesthetics and is also effective in Bajan's poetry of the late 1920s, where it's given the task of defamiliarization. Um, so Bajan was just 13 years old uh, during the October 1917 revolution. And this partly explains the romantic perception of the events in his first poetry collection, The 17th Petrol, uh, which was published uh, uh, under uh, his nickname, Nick Bajan. Uh, so his first futurist book uh, was an attempt to pay tribute to, to the revolutionary years and uh, is um, 
con uh, consequently record decisive gestures and new forms of expression. Uh, the new period, let, let, let us uh, divide his early um, poetry in several periods. Uh, his new period, develop, uh, develop, uh, Bajan's development as a poet, um, began in 1926. In his search for a suitable cultural uh, paradigm, he turned to the Ukrainian folklore tradition as well as to, to classical forms. So his second collection, The Sculptured Shadow, uh, which appeared in 1927, stuck a completely different tone in addition to that of uh, experimentalism. Its speaker tries to develop an understanding of life with all its uh, contradictions. And uh, in 1927, uh, the Pan Futurists uh, published uh, the collection A Meeting at the Crossroads Station. Uh, which was uh, subtitled as the conversation between the three uh, that contained uh, poems by Semenko, Mikola Bajan and Georg Krupi and the prosaic fragment uh, with the same title. And here Bajan presents such classical stanza poems as The Blood of the Captive Women, uh, The Night of Zalizniak, as well as Heart to Heart uh, Conversation which he signed with his own name rather than the futuristic nickname Nick. And this uh, gesture itself indi indicates a, transi a transition to new aesthetic and ideological positions. Uh, the same uh, philosophical orientation can be detected in the poems Bajan wrote in the late 1920s and early 1930s. Uh, they are marked by accumulating images that are perceived as separate and chaotic, but together the poem uncovered the very essence of things through the objectifications, uh, both in the sense of focusing on concrete objects or details, and <clears throat> in the sense of uh, refraining from personal emotion of the sensory world. Uh, thus, objectification and montage uh, become the main techniques that connect avant-garde with Baroque aesthetics in Bajan's poems of the late 1920s. In broader terms, these principles may be said to characterize European art and literature of the 1920s in general. Uh, the emergence of uh, surrealism and neue uh, Sachlichkeit from Dada and uh, of constructivism, Bauhaus and other forms of enduring oriented art uh, from cubism and futurism. Uh, the employment of these techniques also indicates an understanding of art and literature as autonomous spheres governed by their own laws and the focus shifts to the formal aspects of literary work. And uh, um, let me tell, uh, say a few words uh, about his poem, uh, The Blind Bards. Um, Mm, which was uh, which is unfinished and which was written uh, and published actually in 1930-1931. Um, Blind Barts uh, reveals two major strategies used by Bajan in his work. Uh, the first is artistic and the second is cultural ideological. Uh, the intentionality sophisticated language of the poem uh, comprised of professional jargon and archaic dialects is not used by the author in order to imitate forgotten or even non-existing languages. Uh, its aim is to make understanding of the poem difficult or after Viktor Sklovsky to defamiliarize its subject. In other words, Bajan takes a typically modernist position. One must speak about modernity using perplexing language uh, in order to prompt the reader to rethink modernity and its reality. And this puts him fully in step with the great European and American modernist poets of the 1920s, 1930s, such as Yeats, Eliot, and Pound. And Bajan's second strategy appeals to the cultural and the ideological context. Uh, Kabzarstvo was known as one of the cornerstones of the Ukrainian national cultural identity, while building a new national culture within the ideological framework of Soviet Ukraine, Bajan attempts to reassert the unconditional cultural value of Kabzarstvo with the help of defamiliarization. The polemic between the young and the old bards manifests the tension, even struggle, between the two ways 
of representing Ukrainian national culture, the old and the new. So this is probably why Bajan didn't complete the poem. The very possibility of developing a new voice for Ukraine's national culture was destroyed by the uh, imposition of the Stalinist regime's cultural policy in the early 1930s. Uh, so here was my uh, very short, very short brief, uh, very short and brief introduction to his uh, poetry, actually uh, early poetry, uh, actually. As, as I see it, uh, it would be quite interesting to talk about, uh, uh, about such phenomenon uh, as uh, late Ukrainian futurism, uh, as, uh, as uh, we are talking about futurism in the middle of uh, uh, 1920s. Um, yeah, so it, it's quite uh, historically, I mean, um, uh, quite in, quite interesting phenomenon. Yeah, and uh, uh, to end my brief presentation, I, I want to thank uh, everybody once more. Uh, and uh, so I'm personally, I'm very happy that the uh, English speaking reader uh, can, can, uh, uh, can read uh, Mikola Bajan. Uh, and uh, we <laughs> they're very happy that we helped uh, <laughs> him. Uh, to, to be known. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Helena. And uh, yeah, you, you've certainly helped. And, you know, as we know, uh, and as we'll see uh, now, um, you know, and you mentioned it in your in your talk, of, you know, Bajan is, is a, it's, it's, it's complex poetry, it's difficult. So it's very important that we have these uh, supportive texts, supporting texts uh, in this book and um, to help help us maneuver and, and approach uh, this, this fascinating uh, poetry. So thanks again for your, your paper. And it, it's going to be, uh, again, a wonderful uh, tool for teaching Bajan. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, so now uh, let's move on to the poetry, some of the translations. Uh, we have three of the, of the many translators that are involved uh, uh, in this book. We have three that I'll be presenting today. Uh, I'll stop. Uh, Keen, Ainsley Morse, and Mikita Tyschenko. Um, I'll introduce all three of them and pass it along to them. We'll stop. Keen edited the anthology New York Elegies, Ukrainian Poetry on the City, uh, 2019 publication, which won uh, Best uh, Translation. The American Association of Ukrainian Studies. Congratulations. I'm going to stop there. Uh, he has also translated Jadan's collection, A New Orthography, uh, in, which came out in 2020. It was a collaboration with John uh, Hennessy. He's uh, translated Yuri Andrakovich's collection of poems, Songs of a Dead Rooster, which came out in 2018, which also includes translations by Vitaly Chinetsky, uh, which is part of an amazing, also new series of sporting Ukraine literature and translation by Lost Horse Press. And Ostar also translated Vasily Dozinski's chapbook, The Maidan After Hours, uh, together with Ali Kinsella, who is well known in the Harriman Institute, uh, uh, and that came out in 2017. Our second uh, presenter in this block is Dr. Ainsley Morse, a scholar, teacher, and translator, primarily of Russian and former Yugoslav literatures. Her research focuses on the literature and culture of the post-war Soviet period, particularly unofficial or underground poetry, as well as the avant-garde and children's literature. Uh, she teaches Russian language and Russian slash Eastern European literatures at Dartmouth College. Uh, and finally, uh, Mikita Tyschenko uh, is a scholar of Russian Ukraine literature. His interests include post colonial, post revolutionary, and post Chernobyl art and culture. He holds a BA in English and Germanic studies, applied linguistics, and the history of European literature from Cave National Linguistic University in Ukraine. For the past two years, uh, he has worked as a Russian language resident at Panoma College in California, teaching classes in Russian and East European studies. Uh, I guess I'll pass it along to Ostap, as you were listed first here. Uh, thank you very much, Marco, for your uh, introduction. Um, our, our group, our trio, is uh, very happy to be part of this launch. Uh, today we'll uh, offer you three poems which we uh, translated collaboratively. And these poems actually are just a few years apart, but still they 
showcase a different Bajan, a Bajan that kept reinventing himself in terms of his own poetry. And maybe we'll have uh, some time later to talk about it. So we'll read uh, one poem from 1924, one poem from 1923, and the last one will be from 1929. Uh, we'll do it. So. Uh, we'll read all the poems both in Ukrainian and in English translation. And I'll start with a poem called Cirque. Skok eccentrici, skok, perekuvirk setaki, hej triko, nohe vyshche golovi, vsaki seki tukan karkom v tru, vyklikaju tilki gru, tilki truk, smerkovim kakadu, в трик трак прийду без брюк атак це гра це трюк не тік атак вибрик карабкається вибрик полинві на дах сердець теліпається душ колібри далеко десь вибрик тільки вибрик тільки ляльки кики мор пікантна весна мов сир брі і диктові жмихи з блох го підтюбцем Гопсаса, серце лицаря, дзенькоти ляпаса, скоками, шкіцами, гикати, окати. Це шкіц? Так. В пики голих фей, блощицею брика матюк, розкручений очкур галіфе, сальто мортале, трюк. Каркатим скакуном захрюкаю на скумлові шпальти. Тільки трюк, тільки сальто, гикавка. Капкою, кука, фейерверк, смерк, крапка, як дика мука, далі смерть, гіп, ляк, мук, душ, стек, цвях, сміх, пик, джаз, зойк, спрах, кульш, ніч, бліть, блим, зик, гіп, сторч, канкан, душ, випнутих душ, кікапу, смерч, сій, сміх, Налошачий скуйовджений круп. Сонця цяцькі скуй. Вгору втік хвіст. Я – цибатий цвіркун сонячної кувиркної гри. Зойк – стій пропелер. Махаон дум. Ой – пне крізь пельку лякливий какаду. Душу – шкереберт. Серце – ніцічирк. Це цирк. Там – Thanks, Astap. Hard act to follow. Circus. Jump, acrobats, jump upside down and anyway to hell with our tights, heels above our heads. Any Millie Billy Boo my neck will handle it. I declare it's just a game, just a trick. With a pitch black cockatoo playing trick. Track, here I come, no pants, just like that. A game, a trick, not a track attack. A prank, a prank, a clambering. Take the tight rope to the heart's roof. Hummingbird of the soul dangling far off. A prank, just a prank. Just a raggle taggle dolly. This spring is pecan like brie cheese with a plywood flatbread of fleas. At a jot trot, hop. Ta ta heart of a night. Clatter of slaps through jumps over spires. Hiccuping, oh, and eyeing. Is this a sketch? Yes. Into the muzzles of naked fairies, the swearing flings like a bed bug. Undid belt of peg top trousers, flip flap trick. I will grunt like a checkered racer at the crumpled balls of newspaper. Just a trick, just a flip. A hiccup cuckoos drop by drop into a firework, dusk, full stop, like a painful torment, further death. Hip, fear tormented souls, whips, nails to laughing mugs, jazz, squeal, thirsty thighs, nights, pale, blink, squeak, hip, Headlong, souls can can, a whirlwind of beaked kickapoo souls, so laughter on the horse's disheveled mane, mock the sun's tchotchkes, the tail takes up off, I, a long-legged locust, 
in this sunny somersaulting game, squeal, stop, propeller, thoughts, butterfly. Oh, a timid cockatoo presses an upside down soul through the throat, heart silent. This circus, there's death. This one is called Aero Marsh, and it is from 1923. Strunamy w kobzu chmar eskadrilli komune na aeroplan proletar. Ne w igraszki gratis. Kapitalizmu ostatni czas nastaw i z pożarścia federacji po nebu skaczki zagrał. Ni słowa rozjatrenny krater w ryszty jedyny lozung brate z neba zagroza nam, w nebi zgraje ворожих ptyc i treba, wsim treba, treba z pilnym bażaniem zlitys. Perepony na zemli zboroli, lyszył się jeden barier. Chyba nie wykuje na szmolot miliardy eskadr SSRR? Bude Europa w ogni, kiedy czerwonych orliw przenese schidny witr? Nie. Зі сходу революція гряде, капітал у порох зітрем, в майбутнє очинемо браму. Буде диктатура пролетарів в повітрі, повітря нам. Загуде залізо кутим рокотом червоних ескадр полуменіючий міст і рознесуть багрові фокери революції сталеву вість. А зараз неба нам. Бо вітро плави ворожі не перенесуть манне і молебенів божих. Сталевою зливою бомб затремтить земля. На зустріч розпеченому грому пролетар, на аероплан. Стяг революцій триматимем, доки сурма повстань не заграє. І в, от... і в отповідь на ультиматума, ультиматумім зграє. На мільйони миль пропелерів побідний спів. Це червоні ескадрилі, селян і робітників. Всі один. Слова, мов Оскард. Де шерех аероескадр? Серце голоте, єдиний лозунг стис. Ти вніс на користь червоної флоти. Thank you. Little, little change of theme. Aero march. Like strings into the cobza of clouds come the commune squadrons. Proletarians to the airplanes. We're not playing games here. The final hour of capitalism has come. And from the sputtering federations gallop horse races into the sky. Not mere words, our slogans carved in like a rankling crater. Brother, this danger, it comes from the sky. The sky is full of flocks of enemy birds, and we must, we all must, we must now merge in our common desire. We overcame obstacles on earth, only a single barrier remains. Won't we forge with our hammer billions of Soviet squadrons? Europe will lie in flames when red eagles swoop in on an Eastern wind. No. Revolution is rising in the East. We will blow capital to bits. We'll open a gate to the future. The air will breed the proletarian dictatorship. This air is for us. Hear the iron-edged roar of the blazing bridge of red squadrons and crimson fuckers will spread the steely news of the revolution. And now from the sky, the enemy airships won't bring us manna and heavenly prayers. A steely downpour of bombs will set the earth shuddering. Moving toward fiery thunder, proletarians to the airplanes. We will hold firm the revolution's flag until the Zerma of uprising blows. And our answer to your ultimatum will be a flock of ultimatums. For millions of miles, the victorious singing of propellers. These are the red squadrons of peasants and workers. All are one. Words are like a pickaxe. Where's the column of arrows squadrons? The poor masses heart fit to burst from our slogan. Did you contribute to the cause of the red fleet?
This one is called Elegia Attractionif. Із чорного стебла баска сів бав важких басів, і флейтима тушня баска на рині голосів. Різкий пожок, зухвалий скік, сухий ядрік галоп, і флейт очай цих флейт баских над ямами синкоп. Крутися світ, крутися цирк, крутися карусель, і гостроверкий фейерверк злітає над усе. І день усмерк, і ніч усмерк, і серце ніч і чирк, Крутись, скажений фейерверк, крутись, скажений цирк, і оку юр проколоте на шпагах тисяч ламп, крутись, прокляте колоте, такт, темп, чи довго прокрутишся так тут, невже не впадеш, невже? Кожен вибух, вигиби темпу і такту відрукує капельмейстерський жест, відрукує і занотує стій на кожну ноту, натує карб свій. І пізнаєш уперту математику пароксизмів захвату й журб. Товаришу, друже, братику, в кожного є свій карб. Кожному ноту на жебрино іншої будь не могло б. І робить між ржавими ребрами серця сухий суглоб. Серце, крутися, хитайся, хитайсь, вигинайсь, шкереберть. І з губ акробата китайця струмочком сповзає смерть. Захлинився ковтками ковульсі, завертів на блискучій косі і щепилися в спільному пульсі серця усі. Горло горбом напнеться, пнеться крик, як звиснемо флах із трапеці чорний людський язик. Скрипник тоненько панійка. Тоді на цілясі й лети, в зойки розпачливі паніко зімхни їхні голі роти. Слину із сльози виточі, губи в гримаси з міси, розгойдались, мов трупи на ниточках, голоси. Elegy for Circus Attractions From the little black stem of the bass comes the heavy basses sewing and the fluttery fuzz of a flute in the gutter of voices flowing. A quick hop, a daring leap, a gallop as dry as a drum roll, in this flute's trail of despair above the pits of the syncope. Spin world, spin circus, spin o carousel, and a sharp-edged firework flies up above it all. Day into dusk and night into dusk, and the heart stays mute. Spin insatiable fireworks, spin insatiable circus. And the eye of the crowd is pierced by the blades of a thousand lights. Spin, you damn circle, to the beat, to the tempo, How long will you keep on spinning? Won't you fall, won't you? Every twist of the tempo of the beat engraved by the conductor's gesture. Engraved and noted, stop. Every note, each one has been marked. And you'll come to know the unyielding mathematics paroxysm of excitement and despair. Comrade, friend, brother, everyone has been marked. Everyone scrounged for their note and each got just one just the one destined, and the dried out joints of the heart go on the creaking mid's ribs that are rusting. Heart, whirl, wobble, wobble, and clamber and bend, death slides down the little stream from the lips of a Chinese acrobat. Choking on gulps of convulsions, spinning on bright shining spit, and clutched in a shared pulse of the heart, Everyone, the throat will warp into a hump, the scream will halt in place. When it hangs like a flag from the trapeze, the black tone of human speech. A lady will shriek out piercingly, then panic takes aim and flies into their heartbreaking howls, crumpling their naked mouth. Grind up the spit and tears, whisk clips into grimaces. They're swinging like corpses on threats. The voices. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, wonderful, wonderful readings and wonderful translations. I'm, I'm so happy you chose uh, to read those poems. I was hoping to hear them. <laughs> so, um, and I'm happy that we're recording this so I can play your, with your permission, of course, uh, your performances of these texts for my students uh, uh, when I teach this course again. So um, thank you to everyone. Uh, we really, I think, got a great, um, presentation of, of how the book came together and uh, appreciation of, of Bajan as a writer and to hear the poems and translations themselves and uh, we'll be opening up uh, to questions now you can 
submit questions either through Zoom or YouTube, or they'll be passed along to me. Um, and I, of course, have a few questions. I guess we'll start with the uh, with the translations themselves. Uh, in 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 the uh, addendum or illustrate, I don't know what you call it, the section of the book. Uh, there's an inclusion of uh, letters that. Professor Omelian uh, illustration section, uh, Omelian Pritzak wrote uh, in nominating uh, Bajan for the Nobel Prize, which Love mentioned earlier today. Uh, and there's a line there, uh, I quote, uh, he says that, Pritzak writes that collecting rare Ukrainian words is his passion. In other words, uh, Bajan's passion. Uh, so my question, I guess this would be to Ostap or maybe it's also to Miketa or uh, Ainsley, if you've worked also on text, but my, I can't, whenever I read Bajan now, I can't help but see his influence on some of the poetry that emerged in Ukraine in the late 80s and early 90s, and specifically referring to texts by uh, Buba Bu. Uh, I mean, uh, some of the more avant-garde uh, Bajan texts are very influential, I think, on Neborak, Viktor Neborak and his, his pioneering uh, Flying Head uh, compilation. But Ostap, I know you've worked uh, also, on, as I mentioned, on translating Androkhovich's early stuff. And I always thought Yurko Androkhovich also was enjoyed collecting and using rare Ukrainian words in his early uh, poetry. And as somebody who's translated his Androkhovich's early poetry, do you see anything similar uh, having now translated Bajan as well? And um, the other translators, of course, are, are welcome to, to join in uh, if you want. Well, uh, thank you, Marco, for this really tough uh, question. Um, yeah, um, I think that we, we probably should start with telling that uh, right away that, for example, the first two poems which we read, I don't think they ever were anthologized or included in any um, collection published during uh, the Bajan's life or short or after his life. So basically they appeared where they appeared and this were like a newspaper called Bilshovik or uh, some uh, issue, one issue of a journal or some st stuff like that. So it's really hard to find uh, publications now. And as Lev already mentioned, it was uh, quite uh, quite a big deal to uh, locate uh, those uh, publications. So, but I think that starting with this 1929 collection, Budivli, this is uh, uh, something interesting happens. And uh, I can see that you can bridge somehow this uh, late 1920s, late early 1930s Ukrainian poetry to some of the Bubabu poetry. So this uh, constant uh, Sikh, uh, a quest of uh, pre precise words, but also sort of an invention of words, and which is what which was um, which was I think uh, a thing for Bajan as a young futurist. He and futurist and futurist is about breaking language and what he was doing with language actually he was breaking first language and th then recreating or creating and recreating language so what he's, he he does is 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 uh, in terms of creating language or also uh, finding these uh, old uh, rarely used words uh, ukrainian words and recycling in his poetry yeah, that's really interesting. Thank you, thank you, Stuff. Uh, did anybody? I, uh -huh. I don't. I don't have an. I don't have an answer for this at all because I am a total neophyte in the world of Ukrainian literature uh, to begin with. But I can say that um, having when when I was asked to come onto this project, I just think it's hilarious that basically the first thing I ever tried to translate, and I very much um, was a sort of secondary figure to help translate was something with with these crazy words that uh, and, and this crazy language experimentation that does not uh, in some cases does not resemble kind of normal Ukrainian <laughs> very much at all and so in some ways I dove into it almost um, more as a, a Zawum type puzzle uh, you know since since this was already not at all a kind of a confessional straightforward kind of narrative in in the poems I felt very free to um, experiment with the kinds of words in English that 
that we could use, especially in the in the Tirk poem. So. Yeah, very interesting. It's <laughs> a good point. Uh, anybody else uh, want to comment on this? Uh, it's, it's it's interesting, uh, you know, uh, in, in this in this volume. Uh, sometimes you have a poem, one poem uh, that has three translators, and then it's, it's a bit ironic that uh, the one prose text of uh, Bajan's is in there, which was basically written by three writers. There's one translator, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> an interesting take on that. And 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 Roman Ivashki's translation is excellent of the prose, but as we know. Um, the meeting at the Crossroads Station was written. Uh, we're not sure, as Roman points out his introduction, what Bajan wrote, uh, what uh, Skrupi wrote, and what uh, Simon Ko wrote. Uh, so that's interesting as far as collaborating. And, and, and I think that's kind of, it's, it's a spirit that is passed along um, in, in this, in this uh, volume. Uh, uh, because as we know, especially in, in, with the avant-garde uh, writers at the time, there was a lot of collaboration uh, among them. And there was a lot of this not being sure who wrote what, well, there was a play with that. Um, uh, so my next question is to, to Lev. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy that you also included uh, Bajan's cover design for uh, fellow futurist Alexis Srisarenko's uh, 1923 poetry collection in it because that another that was another aspect of, of the avant-garde that was very important at the time was you know the visual collaboration with visual artists uh, and my question and it's wonderful in this illustration section that again that you do include the letters written uh, by Omalan Pritzak and and the return I, I would hope and I'm sure there'll be a second edition that's uh, some of those letters will be translated uh, in the next edition uh, of the Ukraine because there's an English language with it. Because it's fascinating, it really is. Just to see how, you know, these two worlds seemingly, you know, disconnected by Cold War and we're talking 1970, but yet there's this, it's not, I wouldn't say an open discussion, but there's connection between this, this scholar at Harvard and Bajan and Kay where they know each other's works and, uh, it's really fascinating, uh, especially <clears throat> looking at the fate of Bajan. But so my question to you, uh, and thank you for including those. Uh, my question is, uh, how 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 did you choose what would be included? How much was it uh, the editor's choices, um, yours, Luxana's, uh, and Angelica's choices? How much was it the translator choices saying, oh, I have a translation of Bajan available, I'd like to include it. Thing. hey, I need somebody to translate this. Uh, you know, we have two poems from uh, the 17th Patrol, you know, which is only like two, and then we have more from the others. So how did you decide what uh, comes into, how much was it the translator's choice? How much was it was the editor's Well, first of all, I want to mention that um, the whole thing with, uh, with Pritzak and with um, the, the nomination and the, the letter, um, letter in which he says, you know, maybe it's not me that you guys want. Um, actually, uh, George Harbovic um, from Harvard uh, ghost wrote the, um, that nomination letter. So we have, you know, 50 years after the fact, and it actually, um, I think it went to Solzhenitsyn that year, but um, uh, we have the translator who's, who'd been thinking of, of how to translate and introduce that poem, The Blind Bards, who'd engaged in that very attempt that you know, you're talking about. So we have that um, little overlay on top of that. The, the book actually starts and ends with that heartbreaking little moment in history. Um, uh, that being said, um, we weren't sure what we would be able to find. And the more we found, uh, the more counterintuitively we knew we would and would not find, because these are, as Estat mentioned, and um, as one might guess and glean, um, these are things hidden in plain sight or even not so much in plain sight. Or you have the text of Zirk, for instance, circulating on Twitter. You know, these are like r random little things um, because there are footprints of it everywhere. But uh, footprints in the snow, so to speak. Um, we wanted 
many voices because we saw many voices and in every little thing we uncovered we saw yet another facet of Bajan and of the time that he was writing and so and we knew that the stuff was untranslatable also that that became very clear so we needed different people to try to translate it um i think people actually wrote the words untranslatable in, in the translators essays and then said well we uh we tried so um it was it was kind of like it was kind of like producing a record with a bunch of uh, sheet music that was being found, um, instrumentalists that were being brought in that had their own ideas about how to play it. People pairing off in various ways. People coming in saying, uh, "Well, what do you want of me? I don't know Ukrainian." And my answer was, "I don't either, but we need to do this." And if we, but you do know English and you do know Russian, and uh, some sort of interlanguage was created, you know, and uh, bonds were forged and. Uh, these things were rendered. So um, I know that's a, a kind of a, a little bit of a disjointed way of describing the process, but uh, it kind of really did happen like that. Um, all of a sudden, like the uh, the stuff that Ostap and Ainsley and Nikita translated, we didn't know that. We, we kind of thought that it was out there. And then once we got it, we're like, well, we now we found it. Now what to do with it? You know, I have his body. Now what do I do with it? So. Um, and then th there were there were incredible moments. Uh, for instance, um, there was there were things that had previously been translated, and uh, let's say the translator was deceased and uh, we couldn't find the right. So we had them retranslated in in like in record time too. You know, um, people just jumped on things and absolutely worked tirelessly. So I'm not sure how much of the question I answered, but. Uh, well, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it shows kind of, and the way you titled today's event, you know, this is focused on the collaborative effort. And so it seems like it, it, it really kind of, the book ended up being based on these relationships uh, that uh, were forged with all these, I mean, for a 285 page book, there's over 20 people involved, I think, <laughs> including- uh, and That number, I mean, that number, is a joke compared to the amount of people that I'm guessing were involved. Because for every, I, I'm this is, I don't even know how to play the stochastics of this, but for every person that went to translate a word, I'm guessing they asked about three other people what that word is and how to translate it. Mm -hmm. People went to their mentors, some of whom, some of whom wrote the tech, the textbooks on Bajan. You know, people. So uh, the amount of hands that had hands in getting into this. So yes, there were interplays between people and interplays between people in the text. And these were those relationships for that triumvirate, you know, created this. So it's, it's the actual web. I don't mean to the pun with the spiders is tremendous, probably and globe spanning, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, I remember when I was a student at the University of Toronto, uh, I went to a lecture by Umberto Eco, and it was a packed house and people, all the students sitting on the floor right up against the, the stage. And somebody asks a, a student very seriously, uh, do you think it's really bad when there's so many translators translating one work? Isn't it better to have one? And he said, no, I think it's a great to have a party, have a whole bunch of people sitting around and translating, <laughs> probably my, you know, my text. And he was having some fun, of course, with the student. But, um, and you, you did mention, uh, and we did talk a little bit about the importance of visual art. Uh, for this period uh, in Ukraine literature in, in general, uh, European literature. Uh, can you comment, the, the, the cover is quite wonderful. I'll show it here again. I know I should mention that uh, the book under discussion today can be purchased through Book Culture and there's a link uh, in the chat area. And also the publisher, Academic Studies Press is also offering a 30% discount on select titles, select titles with discount code, which is also included there. So be sure to uh, pick up a copy. Um, with those two, uh, but so my question, as, as far as the cover, uh, you mentioned that uh, Misha Belowski uh, created. Yep. Yeah, how, how did how did that uh, come about? Uh, was that your choice, the publisher's choice? Did he? Well, um, it's funny actually because I was on, I think, uh, some sort of social media. I, I've had like I think three different visual design and visual artists from Kiev and other cities in Ukraine ask, ask to see the other versions that we'd considered of this cover. So I guess it does uh, ring bells and strike notes. Um, there's there's not that much stock, there, there's not that much stock imagery of Bajan and Bajan related things around there to choose from for a 
you know, like uh, you don't have as much papyrus and, and portraits of Shakespeare for Bajan. So um, it was actually very difficult. Like we even, you know, we've been in close touch with um, Bajan's grandson, for instance. We're like, do you have any pictures at home? You know, he sent us like all the photos that he had, you know, like we wanted to get a good picture of Bajan. You know, that there's the, the one from the, the one from the coin and the one that was used in the memorial that, and the one that was in the, the I have a book that was published. So we needed to use a different, uh, and we didn't just want to superimpose something over the, over his face. So, so we tried actually this right here, this little cheeky background was one of the uh, pieces of art from the time period that we were trying to, we were trying to create a language again with, uh, with Misha Bilyatsky about how to create this cover. So we, we were looking at different media and different uh, fonts and things of that nature. Finally, we what we came down to is we wanted it to echo the time period and echo the fact that Bajan would have had a hand in his own book cover and the, you know, would have liked to draw that Bajan, especially the younger Bajan, when he was allowed to, you know. Um, and the the red and the black and the 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 beige. Um, we were uh, we were trying to keep it legible, also because uh, you know, future, futuristic and legible are sometimes not always uh, you know. For, in, in all senses of the word, you know, legible in every way. We wanted it to, to be for you to just be able to read the uh, the, the letters on the the page. So it's always it's always an interplay. Sometimes we we had moments we chose a, an interesting font. You know, we were trying to figure out how to play the the Ukrainian text against the English copy on there. And we all of a sudden we had we had a stroop test essentially, a linguistic stroop test. Where you weren't even sure what language you were reading anymore, you know, because it was all in your face, and you know, you were now you're now playing with graphemes, and you're getting confused yourself. So we're hoping that that did not happen in the end. But um, the, we we went through a lot, as Oksana wrote in her little preamble. On. It's unfortunate she's not here to talk about this. We went through a lot of different versions of uh, ideas, so maybe, maybe twenty, maybe more. Um, once we do, once we decided that we had to forge this thing, forge yet another understanding. It's there, there were a lot of drafts, but hopefully we like this one. Yeah, no, it, it's wonderful. Uh, listen, I'd like to thank everyone again, um, Lev and Helena, Ostap, Ainsley, and Mikita for for a wonderful presentation of a wonderful book. Uh, I encourage everybody to to get a copy, and I, I look forward. Uh, to, to using it again in my courses and rereading it. So thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Um, thank you, Mark, for hosting. Thank you, Mark. My pleasure.